Hey guys, this is Delora Dabbles here, and we have just got the Green Glyphs box set from James R. Eads. I backed this on Kickstarter with some extras. So here we have the box set, and we also have the pendulum that became a, um, you know, something that you got for free for backing, because uh, it it was like almost fully funded all of the things to back. Some of the extras that I got was the Divination Diary, I did get the Geomantic Visions. I didn't do that whenever I um, kick-started for the Cosmovisions, and I've heard really good things about it, so I wanted to give it a try. And then we have the um, uh, the Lenormand Houses, right? So, like, this is just a um, uh, an altar cloth with all of the Lenormand Houses on it. All right, so we're going to get into it. Um, let's just kind of look at this pendulum, kind of get this little bit of an extra out of the way. He's got a really nice box to keep it in and it matches all of the other boxes in the green glyphs. Pause to read. Yes, yeah, so very fun. And this is super, super sturdy. Like this thing is... You could whack somebody in the face with this. So like, don't poke an eye out, guys. But it is, it is chonky. It has heft to it and it comes on a nice little chain. So you could, I you know, wear it as a necklace or use it as a pendulum, which I think is just, a, it's, it's just a really, really beautiful piece. And the fact that you could get it for free just for backing, like James R. Eads is very generous with his Kickstarters. So now let's get into the box set. Um, I want to talk about the book because this is just, oh my God, it feels, it feels so good, guys. It feels so good. So this is all of the boxes. And as you can see back here, you can see the inside of the box and we've got the little insert. This was also free for backing it. We reached that as a stretch goal. There were so many stretch goals, guys. So this book, I don't know what this kind of binding is called, but it's delicious. Like, I just want to sit here and just rub this book. And of course, you've got the gilding on it. It's soft. Eh, soft. Not very nice. But, the, but the, this part is not soft. These parts are soft, right? And um, this also has the green glyphs gilding on it and a beautiful little tree on the back. The pages are gilded on the edges, right? And I will let you guys look at the table of contents because I, like, I haven't even cracked this open yet. I did get this in the mail on Saturday and I'm filming this on Sunday night. This paper, ooh, that's nice thick paper, guys. Oh, oh, look at the print quality. Okay, yeah. This book just has completely blown me out of the water as far as, cause like, I know James R. Eads at this point. I've backed um, his, his Cosmovisions and his Pocket Visions and now his Green Glyphs. Like, I'm used to him having outstanding quality, and this still blew me away. Anyway, um, getting into it, I, I'm going to do a flip through of all of these, and we're going to go pretty fast, guys, like, because this is a lot. It's a lot of decks. So here we have the box with the tarot in it, I believe. Yes, yes, this one is the tarot. Right. And you also get a little book with each box. So you have a little book and then you have the glossary. And I haven't looked at these cards yet, even though I took everything out of the box and just gooed and got over it. I haven't actually flipped through these yet. So this will still be fun. I kind of like the minimalist-ish style because it's it's there's still a lot going on in these cards there's something 
there's something about this deck that just feels very natural, very real, very, I don't know. The artwork is what drew me. And like, I really, really liked his uh, Prisma Visions and his Cosma Visions for having so much going on and having such detailed artwork. And yet I also really, really loved the the artwork from the Green Glyphs Lenormand and all of that. You know, it's like, especially with the tarot as I'm seeing it now, everything that I'm seeing, even just with the majors, um, it is simple and complex at the same time. The artwork and the symbolism is mainly what, oh, I love that three of wands. <laughs> Like I said, it's 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 simple but complex. Is it complex in a simple way? Is it simple in a complex way? I don't know. I adore it though. Dude, that's a really good seven of wands too. Mm. And honestly, after this, I feel like I probably have enough decks. <laughs> Um, like tarot and oracle and all of that. I'm probably going to take a break for a while, although I say that and then I don't. Oh, yes, and the cubs have the elephants. Oh, yeah, let's not skip a card. <laughs> That would make the whole flip through just terrible if I'd skipped a card. All right. Oh, I like that Eight of Cups. Okay. Hmm. There's just something about the way he drew these elephants that just joy, just absolute joy at all of the elephants. Okay, now we got the sword. Very straightforward three of swords. I'm glad that he didn't do the heart-shaped thing. It's a little bit standard at this point, and things that become standard become stale. So I like to see him switching this up a bit. Oh, wait. Huh. The nine. I was like, wait. Okay, yes. Yeah, I'm vibing with this. Especially the sword suit. Oh, whoops. Hold on, did I? Okay, let me just make sure I didn't skip any by accident. Yeah, okay. I really like the fish in that one. I like that the stones are kind of sort of runes. I like how the stones are not just money. They're just very physical. That's kind of a nice, a nice touch to it. Oh, that's a nice night. Oh, all the seashells. That is baller. Okay, so that'll do it for the tarot. Oh, and I just love how tidy they are, too. All right, let's get this back in this box. Shoom, next box. All right. All right, and again, we've got the little book for it. I was really, really down for this oracle just from some of the symbols that I saw. I felt like the language it had to give um, was unique. And that's what I look for in oracle decks. I try to find a deck that is thoughtful, right? And this James R. Eads is nothing if not thoughtful. So here we have the acorns. And as you can see, these are extra gilded, which is nice. <laughs> 
Oh yes, and some of the cards have a completely gilded background. Sorry, the gilding messed up some of the uh, my camera a little bit. Yes, and here's the other one. We actually, um, if you backed this, you also got the print of this card. I figured I'd go ahead and pull the print out when we got to the card itself. Um, I don't know, I think there was a vote for which one, but I can't quite remember. Oh, yes. Wow. Oh. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. Like, that's art right there, guys. Like, I just, I love the line movement there. It really does give an otherworldly aspect to the cards, having this rainbow iridescent gilding on the face of the cards themselves. And because they are all the same standard size, you could make a mega deck of all of these or just use them in... Um, conjunction with one another. Really your possibilities are endless. Did it again. Love the little piggy. Oh, that's a happy piggy, guys. I have a set of those. <laughs> All right, that, that was pretty cool. I am excited to use that and to incorporate that with this tarot deck, like, that is exciting. And here we have the runes. So we've got the booklet for the runes. Again, amazing print quality. We have these brass ish dice. I think they're brass. Not sure. Very hefty though. And it's just a fun way of doing it. And it looks like, I believe, yeah, because those are definitely, yeah, some of these are also from the Anglo-Saxon Futhark. So he doesn't just take runes from the Elder Futhark. It looks like he's also got the Elder Futhark in here as well. Basically, if you're into runes, but you don't know much about the Anglo-Saxon Futhark, the ones that look unfamiliar to you are going to be from the Anglo-Saxon Futhark. And it looks like he did put most of them on their own. Yeah, no, that's exactly what this is. These are the, these are the extra ones. Excellent. And then these are more standard Elder Futhark. Beautiful. All right, let's get into the cards themselves. This deck is not uh, is not as big as the Oracle deck, so the decks are also getting smaller as we're progressing here. All right, so here we go. I am really liking how straightforward this artwork is. And, you know, the, the artwork definitely harkens to the Norse mythology meaning of these runes, right? There's really no way to, um, 
this is such a good learning tool. Like, oh my gosh, I wish, I wish I'd had something as beautifully done as this. I've seen rune decks before and they have never just struck my fancy. Just none of them really have. They all seem to be trying way too hard to appeal to people who say, yeah, I'm a Viking instead of, yeah, I have Norse ancestry or I have Scandinavian ancestry or yeah, my family is from Iceland. This feels like this feels natural and not conflated, if that makes sense. This feels very honest, rune-wise. So here we have the extra nine cards that you got for backing the Kickstarter. And as you can see, these are going to be your Anglo-Saxon runes. Slash, some of these are also... Um, there's multiple ways to write some of the runes, so it also appears to be one or two of those um, mixed in here. And I cannot wait to brush up on my Anglo-Saxon um, rune poems and, and kind of go over this artwork a little bit. All right, we are at 16 minutes and we only have one more deck to go. I'm kind of making pretty good time here. Although if you were sticking around for, you know, I'll probably just do that in a separate video. All right, this is the Lenormand deck, last but not least. So this one has been out for a while. So this one is probably not going to be something that's like new or that you might not have seen. You might already own this one. Um, so I'm going to take a moment right here to just tell you that if you liked this, please hit the like button and subscribe. And I do plan on doing a video of just all of the extras that I got and what I think of them so far. Just an unboxing. Um, yeah. All right. Here we go. I do like how the dark side matches with the Blue Owl Lenormand that I usually use. Because I do like to use directional readings. Yeah, and that one's also directional. Uh, the whip's not very directional, but it's also not too common. Um, I, again, you know, like I love the Blue Owl because I love the owl sitting in the tree. I just love the look of it, but the birds is fine too. So we have the child, the fox, the bear. The bear is kind of facing that way a little bit. You could stretch that if you want it. Oh, the stork is also facing as well as the dog is facing. That's excellent. Oh, paths. Not nice. Those are very directionally. Though those were done well. All right, brief pause because my roommate came home. Love the mice. The heart. That's, that's a good one. A little more literal than usual. And none of these I usually do directional reads for. Ah, we've got, ah, 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 gentlemen and lady. I wish that they were more directionally um, readable, though. That's a little bit, mm, I, mm, that's okay. All right. Li oh, you could read the lilies directionally if you wanted to. We got the sun and the moon, the key. Love the fish. Anchor, cross. Okay, we got another one. You guess you could follow her shadow if you like. I'll probably use the ones that have clear shadows facing. <laughs> I say that and then there's this one. <laughs> but hey, that also works too. Excellent. Those are delicious. And then there is... Um, you can use the albatross instead of the cross if you like, which might be something that I actually do because, you know, the less I can, you know, include um, unnecessary Christian symbolism in my divination, the better. And I feel like a lot of people are feeling that way, not because there's anything against Christianity, but just because like sometimes that's not the vibe that you're going for. So I really like that there are plenty of options in that deck. Oh, all right, guys, that was the box set. 20 minutes, 
and um, I didn't get into my extras. I will make a separate and brief video about the extras, and I'll go over um, the Kickstarter extras again in that one, I think. All right, if you like this video, please hit the like button and uh, leave a comment down below if you also received this or if you like his work. Um, all of that engagement really helps the channel. And until next time, happy dabbling and bye-bye.